Well, my friends, I'm about ready to install my water heater on this uh, little slop sink. It's a only a 2.5 gallon water heater. And this is the one that I ended up with. Don't know if it's any good or not. You can see it's got inlets and outlets up here for hot water, cold water. It's got a way to hang it on the wall. It's got a cord that is 30 inches long at the most, so you can't go very far from an outlet. This is definitely going to be a non-standard installation, so come along for the ride. real estate in this shop is very hard to come by. This shop is much smaller than it probably looks on camera. It is uh, the equivalent of putting 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag. So you have to make use of every square inch that you got. Well I've noticed that my sink has a little bit of space right here. There's uh, six inches of space right here so that sink is going to get moved over four or five inches anyway. You know, I don't want it touching this, but I want it close. That'll give me a little more real estate where I can perhaps hang the water heater. And you can also see perhaps that this is a uh, water hydrant. Uh, it's an outdoor hydrant. The shop is not always heated. And this allows me to turn it off way down in the ground and then I don't have to worry about things freezing. I have an extra manifold on here with multiple outlets on this hydrant. So I'm just going to use one of those outlets to bring the wa water into the heater and then into the sink. Totally non-standard, every bit of it. We're just going to make it up as we go and we'll just see how well it works. First thing I'm going to have to do though is install a new electrical outlet over on this side because that cord is so short that number one the cord would barely reach over here. Number two this one's already full anyway so we need to add another outlet over here. So let's do that first. I think to make my life easier uh, installing the outlet and setting up the uh, heater and everything I think I'm just going to loosen up uh, what we've got in place already, get it out of my way, and it'll just give me more room to work. Okay, the sink is not even attached at the moment. The drain was the only thing it was attached to. And there, the only reason for that was because I knew I was going to have to install the water heater. So, anyway, let me monkey with this a little bit and decide where I can move this to. Let's see if I can get this over here a little closer. Yeah, I think I can. I think I can get it over there. And will that give me enough room to put the water heater on the wall like I'm thinking? I think it will. Now if I raise this up, will this hit? <clears throat> yeah, probably. I'll have to have it up higher. That's not good because then I'd have to run the hoses down and around and yeah, I'm not happy with this so far. There's just not enough space, that's my problem. These old air hoses are taking up a lot of real estate and maybe I should get them out of here and move them into a different place. Just not a lot of room. I'm going to take that bracket off the wall. I'll do that off camera and then I'll do some more fitting around to see if I can figure out how this all can work. Off camera I've tried a bunch of iterations. <clears throat> I've got the sink kind of remounted. I don't have it attached to the wall yet but it's kind of where it would possibly live. I can kind of get the water heater about right here. Uh, it's just not real ideal. I mean it'll work. It, it, but I have to bring the hoses back down and under, which I don't like at all. I don't know if it's worth trying it right there or not. I, there's just no room. The only other option I've got is to put it directly under here. And quite honestly, that's uh, probably the best option. I, I don't really like it. I don't like it sitting on the floor. That's the only good option I've got, really. Every other option has some kind of a drawback. And I've tried a bunch of them and quite honestly that's the easiest. The only negative of that is again I don't have an electrical outlet where I can plug this in 
but I could install one down low here or if I could reach it over here um, I could install it over here and then the outlet would at least be useful for something else so I think I will try to install an outlet over here the only negative of that is getting the wire across and I think I think we're in a bay between studs so I think that'll work I think I can get the wire from there down to here I'm pretty sure the hoses will all reach this way it's the only good option so that's what I'm going to do okay well I'll show you how I'm going to try to do this I've got it lit with an extra light believe it or not and it just is just is what it is I think in order for this to work well I'm gonna to have to put this box about right in here so I'm just going to kind of draw the top of the box about right there and you know what if I just move it up a little bit I, this board's got a seam right here that'll make it easier I'd only have to cut three sides so I'm all about easy so let me just do that and I'm just going to eyeball square and straight and we'll just do it that way. I'll just get myself a uh, one of those vibrating uh, saws and I'll see if I can cut through there. Okay, let's see how hard it's going to be to cut this hole out in this oak. This is some really, really hard stuff. It's old and it's dried out and it's an inch thick. It's old sawmill oak. It's really hard stuff. Brother John is a poor, hard working man. His life is hard. Boy. These tools are incredible. Uh, I think it's loose already. It's just getting it out of there now. Well, I popped that out with my pocket knife. I tried to cut the hole a little smaller than I probably need. Oh, well, actually, it's going to be just about right, probably. It's, yeah, it's just about right. I've got one of these boxes that's got the wings on it, but quite honestly, I don't think that's going to be deep enough, but we'll see. At least it's in there well. That's going to work. Before I get ahead of myself, though, I need to pull this back out and get the wire down there fish to it so I gotta figure that out now okay the electrics off I'm gonna take this outlet apart lots of dead spiders in there dead spider carcasses doesn't surprise me at all we have a ton of brown recluse here on the farm just a ton of them, and I am not exaggerating when I say that. I've been bit three times by a brown recluse. The very first time it was a, you know, a reasonably significant reaction. It lasted about three or four days, and it was made my arm or the spot where it bit me so hot that the ice cubes would melt uh, within five ten minutes of putting them on my arm and the arm would remain hot and it stayed really hot for several days the next time I got bit the reaction lasted about a day and it wasn't nearly as hot the third time I got bit I barely even noticed it so I guess I'm becoming immune to them wow this is just amazing how much craps in there and there's no ground wires ever on any of this old wiring here on the farm so as I do this I'm gonna see if there's anything I can do to fix that but odds are it won't be much okay well I got rid of 90 percent of the junk that was in there the guy that used to be here he cut all the ground wires off he never used a ground wire ever it's pitiful. Like, pitiful beyond words. He was the worst electrician I've ever run across in my life. 
he made fish hook connections. In other words, wherever two wires would need to be joined, he just made a fish hook, taped it, and that's all he did. He didn't do anything else, no twist, no wire nuts, no nothing. Never seen anything like it in my life. But he did it, and I'm not exaggerating. I was hoping there'd be an old ground wire on here. Not that it's connected to anything anyway, but I was kind of hoping there'd be one because you just never know. You might get lucky. It might be connected. Um, don't see anything. I'm going to see if I can get a wire fish down from this hole down to the other hole below. Now the odds of this working are slim to pretty much zero, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. thought it was sounding like it was getting close. I got it. Got my hand through that hole, believe it or not, and then I found the wire. No doubt how many spiders were in there, but like I told you, I'm not too worried about spiders anymore. Well, in the heat of the moment, I didn't show you reaching through here, but I reached through and got my arm up that way and found the wire and pulled it down here. So we have a loop. Okay, well, I've got uh, six, six or seven inches sticking out up there. I'll have six or seven inches right here, and I'll just cut it off, and that will work. Well, Alf camera, I took this one off, and... It's an old, old outlet. It says uh, Ace uh, Price, 59 cents. So uh, it's been around a long time. The plastic's broken on across the ground there. So I'm just gonna replace it anyway. I uh, would love to put a ground fault connector in this. I don't know how I would do that without a ground wire. I'm gonna go research it on YouTube and see if I can find a way to retrofit this and see what my best plan of action is. Well, my friends, I did my research <clears throat> and it turns out that you should still install a ground fault outlet here even though there is no ground. And you might say, well, it sounds counterintuitive. Well, it kind of does, but the way these ground fault outlets work is that they uh, check the, the uh, <clears throat> signal between the hot and the neutral as well and anytime that fluctuates it kicks it off so even without a ground wire it can still be effective and save a uh, shock the difference is you're supposed to label the outlet that there is no equipment ground on it and I will do that so to make it meet code and everything Anyway, that's the way we're going. Uh, if you choose to be different about that and, and, and disagree, feel free. I'll put it in the comments. But that's the way I'm going. The one thing you want to make sure you do whenever you do put in a ground fault outlet is that you want to make sure the hot wire is going to uh, a certain side of the switch and the um, and the load going to the next outlet goes off of the other ones. The load outlets are covered here with this tape. So I'll hook up the regular hot wires first, then I'll hook up the other wires for the uh, load. So that way I won't get them confused. You know, it will be safe for sure. These uh, ground fault ones, I, I really don't like the way they make the screws just flexible and they can fly, slide in and out and makes them very awkward. He does the best he can, he prays to God Just to thank him for his bread And a roof over his head, Brother John Lost his wife I've got my extra ground wire that I am going to hook up here, even though it's just going to be grounded between the two outlets, I'm still going to go ahead and hook that up. Sometimes I like to tape these up. You don't really have to, I don't think, in this case, but, but, this, but this is a metal box and these uh, screws are right out to the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and tape it 
and I think it's a good practice. I see some electricians do it, some don't. Now we should be able to fit this back in the box. Kind of glad I put the tape on that because this outlet is kind of tight in this square box. In fact, it might be too tight. Are you kidding me? It's just really bad. It's an old box, I'm sure. Boy, it's tight. I'm glad I taped it. I'm not sure it's going to fit. The wire wadded up behind it there. It, uh, it's not a very deep box. Ah, you're kidding me. And it's one of these kind that would be really hard to get out. But I may take it out and put a different box in. That box is really tight. What a shame. That means I'll have to rewire everything again. I'm going to check that out some more off camera and see what I can do. I have a feeling I'm going to end up replacing this box. This is a tiny box. Well, the scope just got bigger. I am going to replace it with a, a bigger, deeper box. So, I'll peel my tape off and redo this whole thing. I'll, uh, I'll pick up the filming once I start taking out the other box. Just so happens I have a second oscillating cutter. And I think there's room for me to go in um, with this. I've got a metal cutting blade on this. And I'm going to go in and see if I can cut those nails off. That seemed to work. Can I get the uh, box out of here now? All right. Yeah, that little box there, that was tiny. Um, you know, it's not a lot smaller than this one, but it actually fits inside this one. You can see how it's narrower than this one. So, and that tightness was really tight on the wires. So this is plastic also, so this will be better all the way around. Wow, it just never is easy. Nothing I do is ever simple, it doesn't seem like. Well, we still have enough wire, I think, to make it work. There's barely, I had to cut the wires off because I couldn't get them off that outlet, that goofy design of that outlet again. It's really sad when they change things that they don't need to change just for the sake of change, I think. Boy, this is tight to feed wires through, too. I'm about tempted to just tear that off. Another thing that's just over-designed, way tighter than it needs to be. Way tighter. Ridiculous, in fact. They come up with these new designs and they just don't think things through or they really don't have a good design. That's the problem. Now I may have to open this up just a tiny bit to make this work. So I guess I will. So after all that, I'll take this back out and see if I can open this up just a little bit gonna have to be on this side here so the fever came around the gentle girl all we laid her in the ground she was his life and her dying hit him hard till he heard the voice well I'm gonna tell you ain't nothing simple about working with this oak this oak is so hard it's just it's rock hard Boy, it's just barely going to fit, I think. But I think it will this time. Oh, shoot. I pulled the wire through at the bottom down there, wouldn't you know? It's just out of reach. I cannot believe that I can't feel that wire. It's unbelievable. Just doesn't want to cooperate. There it is. Okay. Let me see if we can do this one more time. I'm tempted to 
cut off just a little bit more, so maybe it'll work better. Hopefully that helps. I'm actually going to measure this just to make sure before I try it again. Well, I measured it. According to this, it should fit. Uh, you know, it should honestly fit. There we go. Finally, I think we got it in there. Now, the next question is, will these wings actually do their job and come out? And this is such thick material, there's a chance they might not. I think it actually worked. It's good enough for this job, I can tell you that. Assuming that it is good enough for this job, and I think it is. Uh, let me see here. Can I pull these two wires through a little bit more? There's very little, these old wires are very short. That's all I got. I have to make do with that. See if I can get all the broken wire off of this. Uh, tell you what, it's, again, it's just a poor design in my opinion. Just ridiculous to change things just for the sake of changing and making them worse on top of that. If they made it better, that's one thing, but they didn't make it better at all. They made it worse. Okay, it's clean, so we're ready to go back in and the line is on the bottom. And that's the old wires. Load is on the top. And let me see how I'm putting this in here. The silver screws are on this side, so the white wires on that side. So God, brother John, trouble on earth is ending. All your sorrow soon will be gone. It's important to curl your uh, hooks the way that makes them get tighter also as the screw goes in and that's hard to explain here but you you basically curl the end of the hook towards the rotation of the screw if that makes any sense so that as you're tightening down the screw it makes the the uh, hook pull in tighter not go away further you're a good man you did all you could and they're calling you home now, Brother John. Again, it's all in how you curl that curl. In this case, I've got to curl it upwards like that. And try to get it on the screw that wants to live inside instead of falling out, which is such a dumb design. I would love to punch the guy in the face that made these designs. Really dumb. I'm sure he's proud of himself, but he's really stupid. That's all I can tell you. All right, so we've got the hot side wired. I think I'm going to just go ahead and put the ground wire in there next because it's on the bottom. And again, I realize it's only grounded between the outlets. It's not grounded back to the main. Really don't have much wire to work with. It's really difficult. Even more difficult because of the stupid design of the screw. You have to have it gravity working for you or you'll never get these hooked up right. You could just poke the wire in there straight. I get it, but I don't like that. Late one day, he was working in the field, the sun was low, and the earth was cool. All right, 
right, now it's a plastic box now. I'm not too worried about taping it off now. Let's see if we can get it to go back in there. I think we can. Things have a way of getting much more difficult than they need to be. I'm gonna get my drill and run those screws in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna push this in as I'm drilling on it. But uh, it takes forever otherwise. All right, and I only run them in and then I do the rest by hand. And actually I'm pretty close to where I need to be already anyway. I think I'm already there. Okay, I think that's good. Now I don't have a cover for this at the moment. I'll get one and I'm also gonna label it with the uh, no equipment ground. And now we're gonna move down to the other outlet and get it hooked up. Probably not the best view again, but it's what I got to deal with. So we're just gonna go ahead and get the uh, wires run in here. We should be able to fasten this box in place if it if the little tab sticks through far enough, and I think it does. I think it's there. It's pretty nice. Still he heard his wife calling, come join me now. He fell beside his plow, brother John. Your trouble on earth is ending. Oh, these are, these are those new kind too, with the gravity feed screws. Oh, I hate it. I just hate it. I literally hate it. It's just pitiful. Why would they do that? Sounds like my wife's coming by on the four-wheeler. They've been back exploring that cave on our property, I think, her and her girlfriend. So I don't know if they made it inside or not. We'll find out here in a minute. Much easier one to connect than the other one. But still, I don't like these gravity-fed screws. Oh my gosh, pain in the neck. All your sorrow soon will be gone. You were a good man. You did all you could and they're calling you home now, brother John. Take the drill and run the screws the rest of the way in. That should work. That's, that's nice. Now I do have a cover plate for this one, or I did have. And of course, now that it's ready to be installed, that has disappeared. Well, I'll have to find it. Here it is. My goodness. Nothing simple. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the power to these and we'll test them. Okay, the power is on. I'm gonna push the, I hope that's the reset. There it is, I got the reset in there. And I'll hit the test button, it kicks it out. Hard for me to reset it, I will say that. There you go. Fingers are too sore these days, and I have to get a cover plate for this. Yes, I know that, and I will. I guarantee you I will. So, uh, that seems to be working. Let's test the voltage on it and see if the voltage is proper. 124. So that looks perfect. That's typically what it is here. Double check the bottom one just because we can. 124.5. Let's go down and we'll check the bottom one down here. There it is, 124.56. Yep, 124.5. So it's working too. I've used this same meter for probably 30 years, and this is the first time when I stuck this into the outlet, it pulled this probe off. And it looks like it's broken off in there. I'm not really sure if it's broken off or if it's if it's just pulled out of the hole. But I, after 30 years, it finally gave out. Well, my friends, it's the next day. 
I had to put the project on hold yesterday because I had to go to the store and get another hose to connect up the water heater. But I did, while I was at the store, I got the cover for that outlet up there. I will label this outlet saying no equipment ground on it because that is by code you're supposed to do that. And I'll label this one as well. I did get the uh, new hose. We'll point the camera down here and I'll show you how we're going to install all this. I had an adapter here I put on, the, uh, on this manifold. and then I've hooked up the hose. I don't have them real tight. I did tighten them a little bit. Just double check it here. That's pretty tight. I think that's gonna be good enough. Now this will go into the cold water side on the hot water heater, so you probably can't see it, but I'm screwing that down to the cold water port right now. So I'll just tighten it up a couple of turns here. These go into rubber washers, so it doesn't take a lot of tightening. We need to connect the hot water side up to the sink. Now you can't see what I'm doing, but uh, I'm going to reach back here. There's a, uh, I've got a cap on the hot water uh, side of this faucet uh, to keep the water from running back out while I was using just the cold. So I'm going to take this cap off first. All right, well, I realize you can't see behind this sink, but I did take this cap off. This is what I had on the uh, hot water side there. Now I'm going to uh, connect up a hose to that. So, you know, you can see these already have a rubber washer inside there. So I'm just connecting it up to the hot water side of the faucet, and it, <laughs> it got cross-threaded just instantly, and it wouldn't come back off. All right, I think... I think it's screwing. No, it don't look right yet. Come on, give me a break here. It only does this because it's on camera. There it is. All right, I'm screwing it on by hand until uh, it's uh, snug. I'll put a wrench on the uh, copper part so that I don't spin that, and then I'll tighten it up a little bit with these pliers just because it's handy. A wrench would be better, but this is handy. I think that'll do right there. All right, I put the sink back in place because I had to pull it out to get, give myself some room. I'll have to hook the drain back up down below here. I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but I am connecting the drain back to the sink tub basin area. It's been very easy until I, until you do it on camera. Every time you do it on camera, it's just got to be a pain. And sure enough, it is. There, I think I got it. And I'm just checking all the other connections to make sure they're tight. Okay, I think we got it. All right. Now you can probably see this outlet right here. There, um, there's a rubber gasket in this also, and this is a pop-off valve. It's a really cheap one. The other one that I have in my other bathroom came with a much better pop-off valve. I may just go to the store and get a better one for this too, because I'm not impressed with this one. But. Uh, for now, this is what I'm going to put on here. And the pop-off valve is just in case things get too hot and so it doesn't blow, it'll, it'll pop this off and let the water come out. And uh, let's see, the last connection is from this hot water heater up to the sink faucet. So this just goes up to the sink and let me uh, make this connection. And that should do that. So the plumbing part of this was easier than the electrical part. The plumbing part is fairly straightforward. Electrical on this was a little bit more complicated. All right, so that should do it. Now it's very obvious that the uh, water heater is empty at the moment because uh, it is uh, moving around really easily. There's no water in it. 
Before I plug it in, we want to make sure we have it full of water. And all I'm trying to do is get the plug up out of the way so it doesn't get wet. I don't want to have a wet plug here. And uh, let me tighten up this manifold, make sure everything's right. I've got to turn this on first. I've got to open up the main valve. That should be on, and now I'll turn on the cold water. And now I'll turn on the hot water. And the hot water is running in, filling that up, I can tell. So I'm just going to watch for leaks. Okay, I don't see any leaks or drips or anything, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn the water on. Here's This is the cold side. Turn that on first. Now we'll turn the hot water on. There's going to be air coming out and the water is going to fill up the hot water heater. You can tell there's air coming out and it is filling up the hot water heater. And there it finally has made its way out. Doesn't seem like there's much pressure there. That's kind of unusual. Let me see, the cold water is coming out quite a bit harder than the hot water. I would say that somehow or another it's restricted going through that hot water heater. That's kind of unusual. Yeah, there's a huge difference in the flow rate between the hot water and the cold water. And I don't think I know why yet. That's really strange to me, why there's such a difference. I guess I would have expected a very minor difference, but I wouldn't have expected much of a difference. Sure wouldn't think there'd be that much of a restriction in the hot water heater. Because that's the only difference I see. You can see much bigger flow rate. Well, let me plug it in and see what happens. So the water heater is plugged in and let me just check and see where it's set. It's, uh, I've got, that's all the way on low. I'm going to turn it, uh, well, there's all the way on high. I'm going to turn it back from high, and I'm pointing it straight up and down. The only thing I noticed different is the heating light stayed on, this insulation light, uh, which I have no idea what that would mean, uh, turns off once I get it so far up. When I turn it way down, that light comes on and the heating goes off. So, anyway, I'm going to turn it vertical, which is quite a ways from the full uh, heating. And uh, let's just see how hot the water gets. We'll give it a little time. Just for the record, off camera, I ran a couple of screws into the back here. And uh, that keeps the whole thing stationary to the wall so it's not moving around. For the record, it's only been a couple of minutes since we turned the heat on and it's already warm water, pretty darn warm in fact. Uh, I wouldn't call it hot, but pretty warm already. Just literally three minutes max. Yeah, it's almost, almost what you'd call hot. So, I mean, in just a few minutes, obviously it's gonna be a fairly quick water heater, it looks like, so I think that's gonna be great. Considering it's a very low uh, capacity, you know, only 2.5 gallons, I think that's uh, good that it, it heats up that quick, you know. That way you'll have plenty of water. It, it, the hot water for this is 99% of it's just to wash your hands, especially when it's cold here on this shop. Uh, washing your hands in warm water is a big plus. Well, that's going to be about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and learned something on uh, perhaps a way you can uh, put a water heater in maybe your workshop. We'll see you on the next video. Blah, blah.